Eric Reed Boucher was born in Boulder, Colorado. The son of Virginia Nay Parker a librarian, and Stanley Wayne Boucher a psychiatric social worker and poet. His sister Julie J. Boucher was associate director of the Library Research Service at the Colorado State Library. She died in a mountain climbing accident on October 1996. He has a Jewish great-grandparent, but was unaware of this until he was in his mid-40s, due to his secular upbringing and lack of knowledge of his distant Jewish ancestry until adulthood, he does not consider himself Jewish. As a child Boucher developed an interest in international politics that was encouraged by his parents, an avid news watcher one of his earliest memories was of the John F. Kennedy assassination. Boucher became a fan of rock music after first hearing it in 1965 when his parents accidentally tuned in to a rock radio station. As a teenager his high school guidance counselor advised him to spend his adolescence preparing to become a dental hygienist. In 1977 he served as a roadie for a local band called The Ravers, helping set up their equipment at shows including as an opener for the Ramones. The job ended shortly after the Ramon show, when the Ravers were offered a record contract and left Colorado, Boucher credits seeing Joey Ramon as inspiration to become a singer and the Ramon's lyrics for inspiring the use of humor in his own songs. Shortly after graduating high school he formed a band called The Healers with John Greenway and an unknown third member. Boucher has described the Healers' music as banging on instruments we didn't know how to play when our parents weren't home. While never playing a show the band made recordings including an early version of California Uber Alice, but did not want any of it to be released to the public. Some of their music was made available on a 2009 compilation of late 1970s Colorado punk bands titled Rocky Mountain Low including the original version of California Uber Alice which Maximum Rock and Roll described as experimental improv in their review. Boucher left Boulder to attend the University of California Santa Cruz, but dropped out after the first quarter of the school year. In June 1978, Boucher responded to an advertisement placed in a store by guitarist East Bay Ray stating guitarist wants to form punk band and together they formed the Dead Kennedys. He began performing with the band under the stage name Occupant but soon began to use the stage name Jell-O Biafra, a combination of the brand name Jell-O and the short-lived African state Biafra. Biafra initially attempted to compose music on guitar, but his lack of experience on the instrument and his own admission of being a fumbler with my hands led Dead Kennedy's bassist Klaus Floride to suggest that Biafra simply sing the parts he envisioned to the band. Biafra sang his riffs and melodies into a tape recorder, which he brought to the band's rehearsal and recording sessions. This later became a problem when the other members of the Dead Kennedys sued Biafra over royalties and publishing rights. By all accounts including his own, Biafra is not a conventionally skilled musician, though he and his collaborators attest that he is a skilled composer and his work, particularly with the Dead Kennedys, is highly respected by punk-oriented critics and fans. The first single by Dead Kennedys was their version of California Uber Alice. The song which spoofed California Governor Jerry Brown, was the first of many political songs by the group and Biafra. Its popularity resulted in being covered by other musicians such as the disposable heroes of Hypocrisy, John Linnell of They Might Be Giants and Six Feet Under on their Graveyard Classics album of cover versions. Not long after the Dead Kennedys had a second and bigger hit with Holiday in Cambodia from their debut album Fresh Fruit for Rotting Vegetables. Cites this song as possibly the most successful single of the American hardcore scene and Biafra counts it as his personal favorite Dead Kennedys song. The Dead Kennedys received some controversy in the spring of 1981 over the single Too Drunk to Fuck. The song became a hit in Britain and the BBC feared that it would manage to be a big enough hit to appear among the top 30 songs on the national charts, requiring a mention on top of the pops, however the single peaked at number 31 in the charts. The Dead Kennedys toured widely during their career, starting in the late 1970s, they began playing at San Francisco's Mabuhe Gardens and other Bay Area venues later branching out to shows in Southern Californian clubs, 
but eventually they moved to major clubs across the country including CBGB in New York. Later they played to larger audiences such as at the 1980 Bay Area Music Awards, and headlined the 1983 Rock Against Reagan Festival. On May 1994 punk rock fans who believed Biafra was a sellout attacked him at the 924 Gilman Street Club in Berkeley, California. Biafra claims that he was attacked by a man nicknamed Cretan, who crashed into him while moshing. The crash injured Biafra's leg causing an argument between the two men. During the argument Cretan pushed Biafra to the floor and five or six friends of Cretan assaulted Biafra while he was down, yelling sellout rock star kick him, and attempting to pull out his hair. Biafra was later hospitalized with serious injuries. The attack derailed Biafra's plans for both a Canadian spoken word tour and an accompanying album, and the production of Pure Chewing Satisfaction was halted. However Biafra returned to the Gilman Club a few months after the incident to perform a spoken word performance as an act of reconciliation with the club. Biafra has been a prominent figure in the Californian punk scene and was one of the third generation members of the San Francisco punk community. Many later hardcore bands have cited the Dead Kennedys as a major influence. Hardcore punk author Stephen Blush describes Biafra as hardcore's biggest star who was a powerful presence whose political insurgents and rabid fandom made him the father figure of a burgeoning subculture inspirational force could also be a real prick. Biafra was a visionary incendiary performer. In October 1998 three former members of the Dead Kennedys sued Biafra for non-payment of royalties. The other members of Dead Kennedys alleged that Biafra in his capacity as the head of Alternative Tentacles Records, discovered an accounting error amounting to some $75,000 in unpaid royalties over almost a decade. Rather than informing his bandmates of this mistake, the suit alleged Biafra knowingly concealed the information until a whistleblower employee at the record label notified the band. According to Biafra the suit resulted from his refusal to allow one of the band's most well-known singles Holiday in Cambodia to be used in a commercial for Levi's Dockers. Biafra opposes Levi's because of his belief that they use unfair business practices and sweatshop labor. Biafra maintained that he had never denied them royalties and that he himself had not even received royalties for re-releases of their albums or posthumous live albums which had been licensed to other labels by the Decay Music Partnership. Decay Music denied this charge and have posted what they say are his cashed royalty checks, written to his legal name of Eric Boucher. Biafra also complained about the songwriting credits in new reissues and archival live albums of songs, alleging that he was the sole composer of songs that were wrongly credited to the entire band. In May 2000 a jury found Biafra and Alternative Tentacles liable by not promptly informing his former bandmates of the accounting error and instead withholding the information during subsequent discussions and contractual negotiations. Biafra was ordered to pay $200,000 including $20,000 in punitive damages. After an appeal by Biafra's lawyers in June 2003, the California Court of Appeals unanimously upheld all the conditions of the 2000 verdict against Biafra and Alternative Tentacles. Furthermore the plaintiffs were awarded the rights to most of Dead Kennedy's recorded works which accounted for about half the sales for Alternative Tentacles. Now in control of the Dead Kennedy's name Biafra's former bandmates went on tour with a new lead vocalist.